Before I start, I wanted to share this with you. This is my understanding. I don't know shit. All I'm doing here is sharing my journey. And the things that I say are the things that I feel. This is just my journey. If this journey makes sense to you and you understand what I'm saying, then stick around. But if it's offensive, don't stick around. Sometimes I'm extremely hyperbolic and so are the thumbnails. I share what I'm feeling because this is my journey and it is important for me to share the things that I feel and the things that have happened to me in my life. I wanna say obviously to this, but it seems like it's not that obvious. The things that I say are just my opinion. And if I say things in a hyperbolic manner, then you can just take it as that. This is my journey. I'm sharing the things that I've been through and the things that I feel. A lot of things that happened to me in my past make me extremely angry. It makes me furious. And I'm just sharing those feelings and the reasons why I think this is happening. So this is my story. This is my journey. If you're a Christian and you don't want to hear offensive things said, then leave. But if you want to stick around, stick around. I really do appreciate everyone. G'day everyone, I'm Ben and this is Counterfeit Christianity. Glad to be here again. It's a pretty chilly morning here in Brisbane. Well, it is for me. I know the guys down south don't think it's cold but for me it's cold <laughs> i just got back from the gym and i'm feeling really good if you're enjoying this journey make sure you leave me a like and leave a comment i really do appreciate it it really does encourage me when i hear what you guys think if you feel like it chuck a comment underneath and let me know that you like it or or don't like it but yeah i do, I do appreciate everybody who is on the journey with me today i feel like i want to talk about this idea of what's good right this conversation about what's good came up with me the other day I was, I was talking to some people and a part of the the connections that I have and the group if I do an intentional group that we have together sometimes we always have a listening time where we sit down and listen to God and I was explaining to some people because I do some training in the area of facilitating groups and stuff like that and I was explaining the way that I connect with God every day and I, I might just share it with you guys I have in the past shared it but this is the journey of joy for me and what it looks like and i think that joy is really powerful because it's the only thing that can get us out of whatever we're feeling if we're feeling happy joy is easy right because sometimes people get happiness and joy confused but if we're feeling sad joy is very very important sad angry scared anxiety all of that stuff most of those negative feelings come underneath fear but to free yourself from those emotions you need joy and the way that I find joy is talking to God specifically and checking in with him. What do you want to tell me? And one of the things I've started doing recently, this journey of conversation with God and, and getting back to joy daily has changed for me over the years. I used to write down things that I was thankful for, a minimum of three things every day. When I started this journey many years ago, probably a decade ago, I ended up with a list of over 4,000 things. I did it for a really long time. My phone back then, I actually crashed it because I had too many notes on it. But it was just a piece of crap phone too, so that's probably why. This journey of joy for me has been a long one, and it's very freeing. I still do that every single day. That's why I talk about what I appreciate. The things that I appreciate help me get back to joy. A lot of family, a lot of my kids, I appreciate them, and I'm so thankful for them. That helps me get a lot of joy. My wife, that she wants to be with me. A fucked up piece of shit, bogan Australian guy like me. I'm so thankful for that. And she's glad to be on the journey with me, as my kids are. <laughs> and we all understand that we're all in this together. And that's very, very helpful for me. It helps me get back to joy so much. What I've started doing recently is asking God to tell me what's good. Because the reason I want to talk about his perspective on what's good is it's very powerful when God tells you what's good. He told me in my life to pay attention to my family over everything else. Nothing else matters. Nothing else comes before them. He told me they are good for me, the best thing for me. And that's what I started doing a while ago. I've just been asking him every single day, show me what's good. And he points out things in the world that are good, then points out things that aren't. I understand when people can't tell what's good and what's not because we're told what's good in our life. We're indoctrinated into what is supposedly good, but we actually don't know what's good because we're so confused. Christianity is probably one of the biggest culprits in this and the world in general tells us what's good. The hardest part for people on the way like we are, who have separated ourselves from this institutional Christianity and churches and stuff like that, that's one of the hardest things is to recognize what's good because we've been told to suppress our heart for so fucking long.
that we don't actually recognize what's good anymore because they have told us what's supposedly good and what God wants and all this stuff that they want to put onto you to control you. We don't actually know what's good anymore. It's so hard. Everything that we perceive in this world has been given to us by somebody else. And I've been on this journey recently of saying, I don't fucking want anything from these cunts. They're some of the worst people in the world, especially like our government. And they're telling us that what they say is is God. And then you have the church telling you what they say is God and Christians telling you what they say is God. But why don't we ever ask God what he wants us to focus on and what he thinks is good for us? I do believe that every single one of our journeys is different. You can't be on the same journey with God because we've all come from different places. That's what Christianity absolutely fucks up, is that they're trying to smash everybody into one place and make them all the same. But that actually is probably one of the most evil thing that's ever happened to mankind, especially people on the journey looking for their creator. Christianity murders their souls because of that. Another person can't tell you what God wants to do in your life. They can't do that. Only he can do that. Only the creator, our creator, our daddy can tell us what is good in our lives and, and show us the way for us. If churches and Christians taught us how to have a real authentic relationship with the living God, that would be a different story, but they're not. They're telling you what's good. They're telling you what you should and shouldn't do to receive love from our creator. Like what a fucking lie, what a fucking scam. And people give up their whole lives for this. I know this because I had done that up until the last decade. I gave my life and I, and I sacrificed my family for this evil thing that is in control by the other gods, by Satan, by Baal, Molech and Ishtar. The other gods control the Christians. The other gods control the Christian system. I've talked about how evil it is and pagan it is and every single ritual, every single thing that happens inside of Christianity is pagan and people don't even recognize it. And then they have the, the gall, the balls to speak about love. They don't know what love is because they don't know what is good. They don't understand what freedom from religion actually is. The reason that Jesus came is to free us from the hell of religion, to free us from the hell of Christianity. And there's these evil people built this system, starting off with the Catholics and Constantine and the Freemasons. They built this system around Jesus so that they can control you. And now these evil Christians, they have the arrogance to tell you that you have to do specific things in order for God to receive you. That's why they are worshiping a different God. They're not worshiping the living God. They are with one of the others. They don't know what's good, so they'll never be able to free themselves from it. They only know what they've been told. And I do understand that, right? I understand that this is just the journey. That's why I call this my understanding, because this is where I'm at right now. And I know that my understanding will flow away from this and move on and get more in the future when God reveals, when our creator reveals more of what's actually happening to us as we're on the journey with him. That's why I hate this idea of knowledge, because once you know something, you can't move on from it. And that's where most people in this world are stuck up. They're stuck in this knowledge that they have. Every conversation that I listen to, I love listening to podcasts. My jobs gives me a lot of time where I can just listen, listen to people's conversations. I really do enjoy that. And I get a lot of understanding about the world from lots of other people. I think it's really great. And that's one of the other things that Christianity tells you is evil is people who aren't Christians, they tell you that they're evil and you shouldn't pay attention to them. But if you're on the way with God, you could pay attention to whatever you wanted and God will speak to you through that. But Christianity, specifies a few specific things that you must do and say and look at in order to understand who God is. And that's why it's so captured inside of the box. They'll never understand freedom because they're so captured by the system. So that's why I'm on this journey with God for him to show me what's good in my life, for him to point out what I should focus on, because I don't know this world is so big and so massive and there's so much stuff going on good and evil. One of the awesome things about being with God is that when you're with him, everything becomes good and he flows you in and out of the things that are for you and are not for you. And he takes those parts of you that you want to remove and he removes them for you. It's such an awesome journey. It's a free journey. You don't have to plan. You don't have to do anything. You just have, have to be with him. I love it. For me, it's the most amazing thing that could ever happen that I get to be on the, on the way with the creator of the world my daddy, your daddy. That's what Jesus was leading us into. He was showing us who our daddy is. We just want to tie ourselves up with more rules and regulations and systems. I've had people say in the comments before that systems are not a bad thing, but that's because they've told you that. 
you don't understand what is good because they have told you that a system is good and it's not god hates those systems a absolutely despises these systems i love this journey of god showing me what is good and every single day i say to him god what's good today and it makes me feel so much joy because i'm separated from my fear from my anxiety from this world that pulls us down when big things happen in the world I used to be afraid by them. I used to th see things happen and think, oh no, what do I have to do now to prepare for this? But you don't have to do that because we're with the creator. We're with our creator. We're with the living God, our daddy. And he frees us from the fear of the world. That's what this journey is all about. He's the only one that can tell us what's good. We can't even tell ourselves what's good because our perspective is so skewed. Everything that is inside of our head has been put there by somebody else. I would rather that, that the living God our creator put what is good into my heart so that I can flow from that and then I can be free I don't want to be tied up by some other despicable evil man who has other plans for you who wants you to give them money just like the government just like the world just every system they want to take parts of you away from you every system does that there's no free systems in the world every single system even if it starts off as good will become evil like just say in the future, somebody took a me this message that I was talking about, like it happened in the beginning, so it could happen again easily, whoever becomes popular. But this message of pay attention to Jesus, listen to God, and he'll tell you what to do. And they could build a system around that. Well, they built a system around Jesus and that happened then. And slowly but surely over generations, things change and people don't understand what's happening anymore. And then they get lied to over and over and over again for centuries. And then they get sucked into this system that tells everybody who is in it that the system is God, that this book is God, that these things that you say and do actually matter that you have to pray a specific way, that you have to do good deeds, whatever it is that they say that their God requires of you, they're going to use that as a weapon against you because it's being used against them. They're so unfree. They don't know what's good. Nobody in this world knows what's good. So I don't want to be sucked into the world and be told what's good. I don't want to be sucked into Christianity and be told what's good. I don't want to be sucked into whatever other religion comes along and tells me what's good. I want to be with him, the creator, our creator. We can have that relationship. We're just told that we can't so that they can control our hearts, minds, bodies, and souls. They want you so that they can use you. I don't want that. And I want to show you the freedom of having an authentic relationship with our creator, with our God, with our daddy. And nobody owns him. I can imagine how frustrating it is, but I think it's the story of man. It's the history of all of us forever since the beginning. Even Adam did it. He, he stood back and let Eve get fucked over because he's weak. That's the, the history of the world is men standing back and being weak and not protecting their families, seeing something else is more important, letting somebody else tell them what's good. But anyway, I just thought I'd talk about that today. I didn't mean it to take this long, but sometimes I get to speak in and I can't stop myself. <laughs> anyway. Uh, I love it. I really appreciate you guys who are on this journey with me. Please, if you like what I'm talking about, if it makes sense, you just share a comment with me. It's very encouraging. The negative Christians, the haters, they share it because they are, they're angry. And they, and a lot of people I've noticed just leave a comment based on the picture that I make. And I do that intentionally. I, I intentionally make really provocative pictures because it makes people look. There's a lot of stuff pulling for our attention and I do it intentionally. So they, they will leave a big massive comment about how I'm burning in hell. And a lot of the times how they love me and they're feeling sorry for me, but I receive Christian love because it's just so evil and, and venomous and they spit it on you like a snake because i don't know what's good their their daddy is baal and they're stuck inside of that but yeah let me know what you think leave a like share it with people if if you think somebody might understand and and be want to be on this journey with us but yeah i do appreciate you guys when like always this is my understanding i don't know shit <laughs> I love it so much. I love this journey. I love the freedom that it brings. So anyway, I really do appreciate you guys and I'll see you next time. <laughs>